Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Quest. I'm your host, Hunter, and in today's episode, I am here in Puebla, Mexico, in Cañada, Morelos, at about 7,700 feet elevation. And uh, it's about eh, 75 degrees, got a nice, nice morning, brisk breeze. And you can see they've got the windmills, just like we do there on the uh, outskirts of Palm Springs in Southern California, they got the windmills here. I got my, my buddies are up here looking at some agaves, but uh, what caught my eye as I was f trying to find a spot to uh, get my gear set up is I noticed there was something pink coming out of the ground here. So with a lot of the cactus habitats, you know, it's not gonna be, with for the, a lot of the smaller things that us collectors like, you're not, they're not gonna be glaring. It's something that you're gonna have to kind of really look for. And the plants being in fruit and or flower is definitely helpful. So you can see here, this is what caught my eye. You got that little tiny flower poking out. And I believe, I believe that is Mammillaria geminispina, if I'm not mistaken. I'm almost 100% positive. I was doing a little reading last night. Pretty sure that's it. Hagiana, maybe. And then right over here, just nearby. You got a beautiful Coryphantha species. And this is growing kind of in some grasslands on the rock outcrops. And you've got some dead plants as well. Let's see uh, what else we can find. So this particular site in Puebla was arid. It was the most arid site we had been in. And there was a lot of cactus, regardless of whether or not these cactus were getting water, they were still in bloom. The agaves were where the drought was really apparent. And uh, most, of the, most of the plants in this area, according to what we were told by our guide, our driver, and the other people that we spoke to, this particular area hadn't actually had rain in a year or more. So imagine that. I mean, the agaves were so crispy and dry, they actually looked like they had been burnt. Um, and this is agave potatorum. Now, this is another kind of conundrum in agave taxonomy because according to the description of potatorum, this is a solitary plant. What does that look like to you? That's an offsetting plant. And I would say probably at least 60, 75% of the plants at this particular site were offsetting. Kind of, uh, kind of another interesting little tidbit. When you get out into the field, you just realize the plants must not be reading the botanical literature because they never really seem to fit into a box. But alas, we are humans and we do need to have some form of uh, keeping track of these things, so. Hey, Bill, I'm in so we are here in the Tehuacan biosphere and uh, this is an incredible place because what you have are the massive platyacanthus, right? Uh, you've seen these in some of my past videos when I went out to Coahuila, we saw these. These are the giant biznagas. But also you have Cephalosirius, Columna, uh, Trahada, I believe is what these are called. And you can see that they develop a pseudocephalium and they all tend to lean. And then this one here, this one is exhibiting some fasciation. So it's got a nice crest going to it. And it'll be interesting maybe years from now to come back and see what the uh, cephaliums look like. And the trunks of these are just gorgeous. Reminiscent of a saguaro or a or a giant cardone, or even they've even got a lot of similarities to some of your trichocereus. And then you can see, here's one of the younger ones. Extremely woolly kind of spines, heavy on the ribs. I mean, just look at that. Look at this biznaga. I mean, just starch, sugar, and water, essentially. This one's tipped. Roots are exposed, still going in, still growing. You got seed pods here, and that's one of the key differences between ferro cactus and uh, echino cactus. Is ferro cactus have a scaly fruit, and the uh, echino cactus have a woolly fruit. So that's one one way to be able to tell them apart. And then you've got agave kerchovi, little mams here, big old giant ferro cactus robustus as well, and uh, a vicious, 
vicious looking Cylindra Puntia. I'm gonna try to keep my distance from that motherfucker. So I wanna really try to give you guys a sense of exactly what it's like going into a spot to look at these plants. Like for example, you're walking in, you've got these two beautiful clumps of what I believe are Mammillaria geminispina, but this is what the terrain is like in a lot of these locations. It is a thorn scrub forest. You can see you've got the epiphyllum growing there, a puntia, kind of camouflage, which tends to create some challenging situations because if you're not paying attention, you're catching a puntia pad to the ankle, that is not a good afternoon, let me tell you. So um, what we're looking at here is a beautiful Neobuxbamia. And as you can see, it's got the triple Shaka crests. We found six crests on this particular road. It was absolute insanity. More epiphyllum here. Um, the reason I'm narrating is I had some microphone problems. Uh, whatever happened, it didn't capture it. And it was really exciting. I have a plant in my collection um, that is called Mammillaria Karwinskiana subspecies Nehapensis. And I believe that's what we're looking at right here. It's either that or Mammillaria mystax. And uh, either way, it's a beautiful Mammillaria, an epic massive clump. You see the new offsets are coming in. Super woolly axles. Everything that we came across on this trip was either in flower or just about ready to flower, which was unbelievable. You can even see, just if you take a look here at this plant in particular, it's got super woolly axles, which means it's getting ready to flower. And there was a lot of recruitment. By recruitment, I mean new seedlings. It's always a good sign. And this is some type of a, a stenoserious species here that we're looking at. You look at this, I mean, the beautiful Glaucus growing meristem there with that, like, I mean, it looks like a punk rocker chick's hair. Um, you know, and Oaxaca, there's 40 different species at least of columnar cacti. So forgive me if I miss, uh, <laughs> Miss ID something, it's, uh, it's a little tough with such a wide variety of biodiversity, just with one particular form, growth type of cactus. Forget barrel and everything else that you have, like the lattice penis, am I right? God, this thing is so beautiful, so beautiful. I feel unbelievably privileged to be able to go to these places, to be able to see these plants, and to be able to share them with you all. Um, so thank you guys for being here. Please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. It would mean the world, man. Now, moving right along, we came across a site that was loaded with almost nothing but these massive Bucarnias. Now, Bucarnia is a genus of Pachyhaw succulents, and you know I got a soft spot in my heart for the Pachyhaws. And this genus was recently expanded to include the closely related genus of Calabanus. Most of you are probably familiar with Calabanus hookeri. Well, guess what? Now it's Bucarnia hookeri. Now, Bucarnia was first described as a genus by Lemaire back in 1861, which included three species which are still recognized today. You got Recurvata, you got Stricta, and then what we're looking at here is Gracilis. And they were named after a Belgian amateur, Jean Baptiste Bucarn. A uh, notary uh, from somewhere back in the... Anyway, so they first collected the B. Curvata flowers, and the plants here you can see totally all of them were in bloom. I'm going to guess based off of the um, closely related genus of yucca and some of the Hespero yuccas that we have here in Southern California that these are probably also moth-pollinated. Sometimes the Bucarnia are so big that you can climb on them, and when you do, you find cool things, like more of that uh, Talanzia tewakana growing on. So you got like multiple varieties of Tillandsia growing on this very one plant. It's actually pretty astonishing. Um, I would say this is an all-time trip highlight for sure. Look at that. They don't grow in the air, by the way. It's like a real misnomer. They're epiphytes. What we're looking at is the sign for a mezcal production spot dead center in the middle of the Tewakan biosphere. And so what's happening is they are bulldozing and clear cutting habitats like this in order to be able to produce mezcal and tequila. So that's, uh, you know, that's just something to keep in mind when you guys are uh, popping bottles over the weekend, you know, and you're talking about conservation over drinks. I am a, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a little, little tiny globular fanboy. When I see these things, I get very excited. Like, look at that. That is I don't know what you like about cactus, but that should provide everything that a cactus lover would like about a cactus. I mean, it's rugged. It looks dominant. It, it looks like a weapon. If you had that on a chain, you know, the end of a stick. It's defensive. 
it's done beautifully. Woo! This is a massive, this, this is agave marmorata. I don't, I've never seen this before. And uh, it feels like what I would imagine the belly of a great white shark would feel like. And uh, you can see here, these, I mean, this is just the thicket here. Look at, look at, look at. Little flowering ma'am. We got another crest. Oh yeah. As usual branching. He has some, some more fasciation. Another edition of uh, Crest Quest, brought to you by Cactus Quest, Oaxaca edition. We wanted another one. So this is a uh, <clears throat> Myrtillo cactus, what I imagine is Geometricens. Um, and I noticed that it has scale. So we're at, even the plants out in the wild still have some of the same issues that uh, you and I experience with our plants in our greenhouses in our backyards. Um, so I, I, I doubt that it'll be too devastating of an infection for this plant. To be quite honest, it looks pretty uh, beefy, but... Oaxaca is said to be a place where the North American plants reach their southernmost extension, and the same can be said for plants making their way up from South America where they converge at the ends of their northernmost ranges. With over 30,000 species of vegetation, Oaxaca has about 5% of the planet's total species. Plus, the pre-Columbian history of the area is also incredibly rich. We had the opportunity to travel briefly with two Mixteco men. They spoke to us in Spanish, but to each other in one of the dialects of Mixtec, a pre-Columbian era language spoken by the people who have inhabited the area prior to the Spanish arriving. Hearing them speak to each other as we drove past a 15th century Spanish cathedral, I couldn't help but to think of the bloodshed, enslavement, and theft that went into building these now abandoned structures. And I wondered what these two men think of the churches still standing in the heart of their homeland. It's hard to comprehend how our species can be so callous towards itself. I suppose that's why I love being out in nature. Somehow, these wide open spaces and fascinating forms life has taken bring me more into the present moment where my focus is drawn away from the fast-paced anxieties of modern life in the Western world and brings me into gratitude for being on a planet where magical places and fascinating plants like this even exist. We are what we think, and I think I love this place. This is like the uh, fourth or fifth crest of this species that we've found. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, dub this. I don't know what species it is. So uh, when I figure that out, I'm gonna dub this Mexico's most crest prone cactus. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count it. That's it. It's pre, it's, it's in crest puberty. <laughs> so here in the cactus forest, we have Bursera, and I think, I think, given by the color, I don't, I don't have uh, anything else to go by other than the, the bark and the trunk. It's not a leaf, it's not a flower, but I think, I think this could be Bursera simplifolia. Quite possible. It's got, it's got the right look. It certainly has the right look. Little hectia grown at the base. Very nice. So the zone has changed from where we just were and we're approaching a very special location. And we are approaching this location with a purpose. I'm excited. This is, this is, this is like the main number one thing I wanted to see on the trip. And if, I did, if we didn't see it, honestly, it still would be, and have already been, if we went home tomorrow, I'd be like, man, that was such an epic trip. Yeah. <laughs> the genus Focaria has around 11 species of xerophytic woody shrubs, three of which are listed by CITES. The mighty Bujum, endemic to the Baja Peninsula, which you can see in some of my previous videos covering the region. Then there's fasciculata, which is a highly localized species occurring in Hidalgo. And then, of course, my favorite, Focaria purpusi, or the Mexican bottle tree, depending on your degree of comfort with binomial Latin. I love the caudiciform-like morphology of the younger plants. And to me, 
for pussy is somewhere between fasciculata and columnaris on the scale of Fokiria visual morphology. It is also quite literally in between the two geographically as well, so who knows what geological or weather events could have split the lineage somewhere in the distant past, giving us the distinctly different, albeit somewhat similar plants, their species status. Perpusi is threatened with extinction, and it's listed as Appendix 1 on CITES, making international trade of the species highly illegal. Now, Meanwhile, our Oaxacan friend explained to us that in the previous year, seven 18-foot tall plants had been destroyed by a mining company going after the marble which lays beneath the limestone these plants are growing out of. Now the plants were bulldozed, not extracted and sent to the University in Mexico City or any number of botanic gardens, local or international growers, or the collector markets, just bulldozed, destroyed, no cuttings taken, no seeds saved, no genetics preserved, quite literally wasted, like a 1970s mob boss in the front seat of his Pontiac. There may be a yet-to-be-discovered valley with a limestone outcrop somewhere containing a healthy population of Perpusi unknown to botany. It's possible. After all, Oaxaca is a state of mountains with plenty of canyons that botanists have yet to traverse. And these plants seem to grow as tall as 20 feet here in some cases. There were plenty of plants, albeit in a tiny area, and thankfully, the terrain is treacherous and locally protected enough to keep out most, and those that enter without permission and a guide are gambling with their lives. When my sons are my age, these plants may only exist in collections and botanic gardens around the world. They may go the way of the dodo or the giant sloth, back into the cosmos as carbon. Possibly, billions of years from now, the particles from the last perpusi will be used in the birth of a new star a new sun for a new earth where life will begin again in all its complexity and wonder. So we're here at the, uh, the tip top of a, an area where they mine marble. And uh, out of this dark black, almost eh, grayish black limestone, you've got the uh, Tillandsias growing. And then you've got the Mexican bottle tree here. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm having a hard time knowing what to say. I wasn't, um, I wasn't really expecting, oh my gosh. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna creep down, creep down around here, where you got this uh, bursera, nice beautiful red peely bark. You got the gorgeous Tillandsias. What do we have here? Climbing up, there we go, look at this. Wow, you guys. You got Bursera growing here at the spot. You got Columna Trahani growing at the spot. And this is some, look at, you got some little mams in flower. This is what I would imagine is Mammillaria. Come on, boy, look at it closely. Look at it closely. Possibly Gemina spina. I, I'm not 100% sure, but you have this mammillaria growing right here. And directly behind it is the Focaria propusi. Intact with Tillandsias, of course. And look at the, the dynamic coloring on the new growth that's pushing. Isn't that gorgeous? This is an exceptional plant. Related to the Acatillo that we have in, in SoCal, growing right on these, these cliff faces. Couple more. I can't get to those, guys. Oh, they're so pretty. They're so pretty. This is honestly the kind of spot where, like, looking at these, these folk area here, I could just sit here and just spend a half an hour looking at each plant and not even doing anything, just looking at it. Um, it, it's really awe-inspiring to see. I have seen so many of the folk areas now in their natural environment and to see the wide range of morphology types that the plant has and just to see, that's my favorite one. 
Purpose Eye is my all-time favorite. And to see it grown out of the rock like that on the shady side of the rock, no less, it's just, uh, it's my church. It's church to me. Um, just in awe. This is a lovely Victoria Ridge. Yeah. Victoria. What's that? Yo, Geronimo, viste estas en Viesca? Victoria Ridge. Oh, nice. ¿Y cuál es esta? This is Chibera Lawi. Lawi. Ah. Este es el Rakta. Hey, Geronimo. This is the. That's why Solomon brought you Aha. La nada gets big. Yeah, no, clump. Too. This is Agave is 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 the Oh Nizan Densis. Yeah. Nizan Densis. It's an agave. Isn't that wild? It's, what? A, it's like an aloe. This oh. grows up in southern Oaxaca. That's a cool one. Huh? Yeah it is. It's like an aloe. It is like an aloe. Yeah. yeah. That's so crazy. But that grows up in Zanda. Uh, this is uh Bobby Cornuta. Ah oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude. So cool. I used to call out my babies uh is that Kevin Dee? Bobby Cornudo. Come on, DVD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, sí, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've been there. Come on, DVD. Go for it. See. Sí. Some psychads, too. These, yeah, these are, I don't know. Wow. So here's the little little baby uh, Bucarnias. You saw us climbing on those big giant ones, and here's the little seed grown ones right here in Oaxaca. Fasiculata. Oh. Oh, nice. That's a beautiful one. Yeah. Ooh, aerial carpets, huh? Oh! Oh, like yeah, that. man. Wow, dude, how'd you like to just be able to uh, grow your aerial carpets outside like that? Dude, that is... Wait, wait, it's, it's January. That's awesome. That is all time right there. Whoa, look at that. Insane. Oh, the particular is in flower. Look at the fasciculata flower. Even down here, it's flowering at the same time. All the ones I've seen lately, before I left, were all flowering in LA. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave a nice comment, you know, go send it to your grandmother, tell her that you're now into plants, let her know what you're doing, keep her up to date with your life, and thank you for being here. Peace.